The reason that I involved uh, the school children in the expedition is that the leaders of the future, both with respect to scientific exploration and discovery and environmental protection of the planet. This expedition is called the Elysium Epic Visual Expedition. We're following in Shackleton's footsteps a hundred years later. It's really important for kids to get switched on to science and technology because these are our leaders of tomorrow. And there'll be 57 explorers on the trip. So between all of us, we're going to be documenting Antarctica above and below the water. We have some of the world's leading expert photographers, videographers, and movie makers on the trip. Emery Kristoff, who discovered the Titanic with Robert Ballard from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in the US. My role will be as a geologist and as a geophysicist to actually discuss what the geological and geophysical processes are for climate change. And I was really pleased to team up with grade 10 and 11 students at Bishop McNally High School and with the grade 9 classes at St. Vincent de Paul. The grade 9 students had just finished reading Shackleton, and so I was able to bring Shackleton to life for them 100 years later and talk about how modern day explorers explore Antarctica. I'm leaving tomorrow to get to Buenos Aires. We leave on February 12th from Ushuaia, which is where Shackleton departed from. We come back to Ushuaia 20 days later on March the 2nd. This is a route that shows you what Shackleton did in 1914. He started up in the north. It took him five months to get from England to South Georgia. And in December, he left South Georgia and he went all the way down south, pushing through pack ice, hoping to get close to the continent of Antarctica. But down at the bottom on January the 18th, the boat couldn't go forward, it can go backwards, it got frozen in ice. So for 10 months, his boat was transported by moving pack ice all the way to the north, up to November 21 when the boat sank. It was crushed by the forces of the ice rafting up around it, and they put all their equipment, including their 70 sled dogs, onto a 300 meter in diameter ice floe. And they camped there for five months. And that ice floe kept moving north, and killer whales were patrolling the perimeter of the pack ice, jumping up and looking at Shackleton and his crew and the dogs because they looked rather tasty. And that piece of pack ice kept getting smaller and smaller as summer was coming. It cracked in half and some people who were sleeping in one of the tents fell into the ocean. The tent came apart and they decided it was time to get off the ice floe because it was just too dangerous. They had 70 Canadian sled dogs on their ship. They used their sled dogs as long as they could. Eventually they had to shoot their sled dogs and eat them because when they had to abandon the camp and get into the boats, they could not take the dogs with them. They shot them, they ate them. They ended up, as humans, pulling their boats across ice, over ice ridges and so on. They launched their lifeboats. They only had three lifeboats and they paddled up to a place called Elephant Island where we're going to visit on our expedition. It's pretty tough to get into Elephant Island. Not many people have been able to land there in the last hundred years. It wasn't a really great place to be. There wasn't a good camping spot. There were seals and penguins that they could eat. But they decided that uh, the only way to be rescued was to launch one of the lifeboats. And Ernest Shackleton went from Elephant Island back to South Georgia to get help. They left the rest behind because no one knew where they were. They had no satellite phones. Everyone thought they were dead. The geologist who was left behind, his name was Wordy, and he had a lot of tobacco left over. And he started trading his tobacco rations for pretty rocks. So he get, had the guys running all over Elephant Island looking for rocks for him. So I'm interested to see if the pile of rocks is still in Elephant Island because I don't think he took all the rocks home with him. They ended up getting to South Georgia, but this is the roughest ocean in the world. They were lucky that they hit the island because had they not hit the island, they would have been going to South Africa and they would have been dead. They landed on the wrong side of the island and they had to climb up over the mountains, over the glaciers with lots of crevasses, go down the other side to Whaling Station where they were essentially rescued at that point, but it took four more months for Shackleton to get boats back to Elephant Island to land to get his men off the island because of ice. So it was truly a horrific ordeal for these people, and they didn't have polar fleece, and they didn't have survival suits. They had cotton and wool. The interesting thing is that Shackleton and all of his men survived. That's why people are so impressed by Shackleton, because he put his team ahead of everything else in terms of glory and exploration, and he made sure that they all got home. This is our route on the Elysium expedition. We will leave Ushuaia, which is the southernmost city in the entire continent of South America. We will go to the peninsula of Antarctica, and there's a whole lot of islands there. We'll be studying Antarctica on the peninsula. Then we'll go to the southeast into the Weddell Sea, the Elephant Island. Eventually, we'll go back to South Georgia, and we'll be visiting all the places that Shackleton visited during his expedition that went really sideways. Originally, his expedition was across the continent with dog teams, go through the South Pole, come out the other side, but he never got 
to do that because he was stuck in the ice. So 100 years later, we're gonna study many things. We're gonna look at pack ice. We're going to look at glaciers. We're going to look at icebergs. We're going to be looking at mechanisms of recession and what's happening to the landscape as the glaciers disappear because different animals are moving into different ecosystems now. Animals that need pack ice and there's less pack ice are changing where they live. And some species are displacing other species. So as climate changes, the biosystem and the ecosystem change and the animals do different things. We're gonna be looking above and below the water at whales, at seals, at anything that moves really. We'll look at invertebrates as well, you know, sea stars, starfish, octopus. We're really interested in the, the charismatic megafauna, the big guys that are really exciting. Whales, seals, penguins, and then with the scuba divers, they'll be able to get down into the water column and see all the invertebrate things that live in the water, including krill, shrimp-like animals, and they are the basis of the food chain in Antarctica. This is a leopard seal. These are scary critters, if you're a scuba diver or a snorkeler. One scientist was attacked by a leopard seal in 2002, came up right through the ice, broke through a foot of ice, because they were walking on it, and grabbed a guy by the, the knee, and they had to actually kick the seal with the crampons in its head for him to let go. So they finally got their buddy away from the leopard seal, and they were just recovering uh, when the leopard seal came up again and started running across the ice at them and grabbed the guy again, started pulling him towards the hole. These guys are scary on the one hand, but they're also majestic on the other hand. Their heads are twice as big as a grizzly bear's head, to put it into perspective. This guy's a Canadian. He grew up in the Arctic. He's a National Geographic photographer, and he spent four days filming this leopard seal. She took my whole head and camera inside her mouth and did these threat displays, but then the most amazing thing happened. She went off and got me a live penguin. She came up and she started to feed me a penguin. And she kept letting these live penguins go. And the penguin would shoot past me and she would look disgusted as she'd go by me. And then I think she realized that I was this useless predator in her ocean, probably gonna starve to death. She started to bring me weak penguins, then dead penguins. Then she showed me how to eat the penguins. She would offer me partially consumed penguins. She started to take penguins and actually push them into my camera. I think she thought the camera was my mouth, which is every photographer's dream. For four days, he was in and out of the water with this leopard seal, which just goes to show that they're not always animals that will kill you. It, it depends on the set of circumstances and how you approach them. He's just created a book called Polar Obsessions, both the Canadian Arctic and Antarctica, and it's for sale through National Geographic right now. So when I go diving in Antarctica, I need to be warm. So I start with long underwear. Then I put my layer of blubber on. This is my layer of blubber, and it's pretty heavy. It's, it's heavier than most ski suits I wear when I go skiing at sunshine. Then I put this on, and this is the dry suit made of a fabric called trilaminate. The next layer of blubber that I have is a layer of air. So I have long underwear, I have this, I have layer of air, and then I have this. And then if I want to look like the Michelin Man, I can completely blow it up, but I can't swim through the water. This is an Arctic-rated dry suit. By the time you get all this stuff on, you really want to get in the water, because you're really hot. I'm letting air out of my suit, because I have two buoyant. You're in a vertical position, and you just kind of go down. Water pressure will push the air out of the suit. If you were going to go scuba diving in Lake Minnewanka, you'd wear this this winter, because people would wear this kind of suit ice diving in Canada as well. That suit cost $3,000, it's not cheap, which is a good thing I've got corporate sponsors. Did we have that video with the dry suit? We did this last Thursday. Diving Unlimited International is a company of women who make suits for women, they test them out, they're specifically designed for the female form. These will probably be too small to start with. Yeah, yeah, pop your hand out. I think we're pretty safe doing two. Yeah. We're cutting an inch off everywhere. This is wax to wax the zippers. We'll make it easier. Ah. I'm going to put my boots on and then my hood and then your gloves. I'm taking an Iridium satellite phone with me to Antarctica so that I can file internet dispatches as well as make telephone calls. Modern day explorers will explore Antarctica following in his footsteps, but Shackleton losing his ship wouldn't happen in modern day Antarctica with respect to being stuck in the ice for 10 months, camping on an ice floe for five because of all the modern technology that we have today. Doesn't mean that it's not dangerous still. Bottom line is young scientists or videographers 
there's still a lot of things to discover on the planet. The ocean occupies 71% of the planet, and we know less about the ocean than we know about the moon or Mars. So it's the last unexplored frontier. Now, you all know about climate change and how quickly it's advancing. The arson B life shell broke off in 2002. It was the size of part of New York City. And since it broke off, the entire ice shelf has been destabilized. It keeps falling off into the ocean at a rapid rate. And what we learn in Antarctica, we can apply to Canada's north, to our Arctic, because our Arctic is warming too. Have you ever been to Antarctica before? And if not, what are your expectations? I've never been, and I've always wanted to go. Antarctica is the most extreme snorkeling on the planet. I was just Googling Antarctica snorkeling. Antarctica snorkeling and eventually found the trip. So I stayed up really late so I could get to talk to them in Holland the next morning. I said, I need to come on your trip. There's just no doubt. And she said, well, it's been full for three years and it's a pretty elite group of people. So I was pretty depressed. And then she said, two people canceled yesterday. So, audition. Tell us why you should be on the trip. So that's how I got on the trip. Look forward Cheers. to uh, communicating. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay.